Welcome to Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. Did you ever play the Oregon Trail video game when you were in grade school? Oh, well, there's a new, more inclusive version out, and its designer historian Margaret Hiddle was the first speaker at the Willamette Heritage Center Zooming Back the History series in February. So many people showed up to hear what she had to say. What's the excitement? We're learning about that and what else in store for this spring series with the center's education manager, Josh Henderson, tell us all about what happened in this wonderful Zoom meeting you had. So like you mentioned, Dr. Margaret Hiddle was absolutely fantastic, and she was delighted to share her experience working on this new version of the game. Um, she kind of was very candid with us about growing up um, playing the Oregon Trail game, as many Americans did, um, and both found it enjoyable, a fun experience to play the game, but often found that it disconnected with some of the history she was learning at home from her own native community. Um, so she went on and talked a little bit about how she helped populate the new version of the game with new Native peoples and new Native roles that they play in the game, as well as lent her perspective as a historian um, to making a more inclusive game for future generations of Americans. Did she have help with this? Tell us how that game evolved. So it sounded like from her presentation, she got uh, she was um, contacted by the game developers, Game Loft, which is a French-based video game company. Um, and her and her and several other uh, Native historians were were contacted, and they all got together and decided, you know, hey, we can remake this game that'll both be enjoyable. It'll still have a lot of the same elements that people have enjoyed for you know some fifty years. What else did she say that took the uh people into this world that she's trying to make familiar to them, the ones of the peoples who were here and greeted the settlers. In the original version of the game, you know, native peoples were always that lingering um, group of people on the outside of the game that came along with other hazards like snake bites and dysentery. Um, but she helped highlight that each of these individual native nations had their own culture. They had their own sense of dress um, and, and um, kind of helped dispel some of the, the stereotypes behind like the clothing that people would be wearing at that period of time or the equipment that they would be using. Um, in some of the iterations of the game, they've always depicted native peoples using bow and bows and arrows when in fact, many native nations were using guns at the time. So, you know, it's she really helped highlight the historical accuracy of native communities in the mid 1800s, early 1900s. Um, and you know how different each of these cultures are across our, our beautiful nation. The Oregon Trail stretched across the United States, the real Oregon Trail, and it was arduous, it was difficult. The pioneers who went on that trail uh, often didn't survive, and it had its own pitfalls. Tell us how the game was organized so that people could enjoy this journey and actually get to their destination in Oregon City. So that was a, a myth that actually she helped to dispel. Um, if I'm, if I can remember right, you know, the the game when it was originally released in the '70s and early '80s, kind of perpetuated this myth that it was hard to survive along the Oregon Trail. And although that you know life was difficult, um, I think if I remember right, she said only six percent of people um, actually perished on the Oregon Trail. Everybody else made it. So as difficult as the game is to survive. Um, you know, people in real life, people in history, you know, really persevered on the trail um, and, and eventually made it to, to Oregon. And we have many descendants here today that can trace their relatives back to the wagon trains. What did your audience have to say about it as they were talking to her? Did any of their questions come up that uh, you remember about uh, how, how they were taking it in what she was saying? So I think many people, we actually just had a moment of reflection of, you know, many of the uh, folks who attended were remember having fond memories of, you know, playing this game, or maybe their children have, have played this game. And I think a lot of people were a little shocked to know that that game isn't totally historically accurate. Um, you know, I think, you know, resources in schools are somewhat limited and teachers tend to rely on other resources like this video game to, you know, teach uh, this kind of content. So this, the game might have been the only 
um, real information a lot of people had about the Oregon Trail. And now this uh, presentation they attended last Thursday has maybe changed their kind of outlook on, on history. And perhaps encouraging them to learn a little bit more about indigenous peoples and how they viewed this westward expansion and still everybody enjoying the same Oregon Trail game, just with a little different uh, aspect. Exactly. It. It's not just a game for kids. It's a game for adults, too, which is wonderful. <laughs> And you can still die from dysentery. And you can <laughs> still die of dysentery. It's got all those wonderful elements that, you know, people have loved for 50 years. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Who have we got coming up next? So our next speaker on March 17th is Chris Havel from the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department. And he's going to be sharing uh, a brief history of Oregon State Parks as they celebrate their centennial birthday, which is quite incredible. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to having him on March 17th. What uh, made you want to have him on? Because there are obviously things about our beautiful parks and all these areas and a history that people don't even know. Yeah, I certainly didn't know about it. Um, but I think during the, the pandemic, many people sought our beautiful state parks as a, as a way to recreate and have a little bit of refuge from being kept inside all the time. Um, so I think it's both a relevant topic and then the fact that it's their centennial birthday um, it, it's huge. And I think this it's a perfect opportunity to really highlight their history and how Oregon um, became a state with so many wonderful state parks. All right. And then after that, who do you have? So in April, we have Brees Edwards from the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron. He is an archaeologist in his own right, um, much like I was before I worked at the Willamette Heritage Center. And he's going to be sharing the history of Salem um, from the lens of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron. Um, we, we look at Salem as both our, our home and, and, and place of business and place of recreation. And he's going to be contrasting that with the ways of life of Native peoples who have been here since time immemorial. Um, you know, Native people, this was their original ancestral lands, and they've been doing many of the same activities that we still do today. So I think that'll be definitely very interesting. And your final speaker for the spring series is... So in May, we welcome uh, Dr. Russell Lowe, who is a physician, um, but also a historian who's going to be sharing a little bit about his family um, and his uncle Stanley, who served and was unfortunately lost during World War II. Um, but um, Dr. Lowe and his family are, are Chinese American, and he's going to be sharing a little bit about in the 1940s during a time um, when there was so much discrimination towards uh, Asian Americans, how... Um, those members served in our uh, armed services and, and helped protect our country during World War II and how they weren't just serving as you know, Chinese American, but they were serving as Americans with other, uh, their American brothers. That's one of the things you seem to be doing is bringing forward other people's, other cultures experience of history and of life here in Oregon. Exactly. I, I see these not as you know, common history topics that we would be learning in school, but these stories of, you know, individual people, um, doctor, in this case, it's, it's Dr. Lowe's uncle who grew up in Salem um, and, and, you know, highlighting these stories that really connect our community and our state together. People could probably just get together and talk endlessly, going even more deeply into these topics. And one of my favorite parts about this speaker series is it's not just listening to a wonderful presenter you know, share their insights on a historical topic, but it usually ends with about 20 minutes of discussion. You know, we all have a chance as community members to talk with the speaker, ask questions, um, but also just talk with each other about our own experiences living here in Salem and in Oregon and what we've all, you know, witnessed through our, our times on this planet. So um, that's, yeah, it's one of my favorite parts about this speaker series. And I, I definitely look forward to um, you know, keeping the speaker series going, bringing in wonderful speakers from all over the place. Josh, thank you so much. We really appreciate this. We look forward to more of your adventures with history. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us today on Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw.